Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome one, welcome all to Music Next Family for the Food Fest 2020. My name is Layla Holland and I am part of um, the group MC Squared. I played violin for about three or four years and I'll be one of your three co-hosts tonight. We'll see the premiere of um, the new video of our students at Music Next performing Funga Lafia and Lil Liza Jane. There will be a play along as well as a dance along. We we'll also welcome our special guest today, Cedric Watson. You'll learn more about him from my friend Liam. Cajun Creole and Zydeco musician Cedric Watson is a four-time Grammy-nominated fiddler, singer, accordionist, and songwriter. Originally from Texas, Cedric moved to South Louisiana at age 21, quickly immersing himself in French music and language. Over the next several years, Cedric performed in 17 countries and on seven albums, including his own group, Bijou Creole. Thank you so much for joining us today, Cedric. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. song that I started off with and I sang some of it and then I went from that into a, a tune called McGee's One Step. I know some good old songs from uh, down here in South Louisiana uh, from the down swamp. You know, bayou, bayou country. And uh, the majority of these tunes are they're going to be in, of, uh, in French, the French language and everything. So you're going to hear a lot of these songs and they're going to be singing about things that happen here in South Louisiana in this region and the Cajun and Creole culture is going to be very related to that. And a lot of the songs, they sound like they're happy and, and joyous, but the words are going to be about something sad, kind of like blues music. So Pas um, this here tune that I'm going to play now is a song that uh, it comes from uh, back in the 1800s and people played this song at weddings. And they had this uh, lady, old Creole, actually she was a young Creole lady and her husband was uh, 
the fiddler, and he was uh, old. And they would go around, he played the fiddle. They'd go around and she would sing and play this at, at uh, Wettins. So it was that, uh, I like to call it 1800s R&B. You know, uh, it got that, that old school kind of bluesy sound to it. And uh, being that French culture was the French and also, you know, uh, Spanish and African uh, culture all kind of mixed together here in one. Um, you can hear it in songs like this. These are these old tunes that, you know, few people play nowadays, you know, it's an old traditional tune. One, two, three, two, two, three. <laughs>
There's a lot of clapping going on. <laughs> Y'all, thank you all. I can't hear you, but I can feel you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is the time for everybody who's gonna, whoever wants to stand up and try. You know, I'm going to show y'all the motions of uh, two-stepping. Now, one, y'all, is going to be like the way uh, Cajun and Zodico two-stepping the rudiments of the dance. But it's not exactly how uh, you, you're going to, when you go to a Cajun and Zodico dance, this is not what you're going to, how people are going to look necessarily. I just want to give you the rhythm of it and kind of the rudiment. And y'all all got your own way of dancing and your own body lingo when you hear a beat that you like. You know, so you just gotta like add your own flavor to it and your own, um, I don't know, add your own uh, sauce piquant. So, <laughs> so uh, the the predominant dance that you see here is like, like the first song I played that was faster, uh, it's gonna be a two-step. And it normally goes along with the, um, I guess they call it four, four rhythm. I'm not really a musical, like uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff, the technical part, the, the, uh, theory. I'm not really too well with that, but um, you know, I think it's like four four. So uh, that kind of rhythm, uh, the two step comes along with it. So let's just say, let's all imagine that it's going to be a song like this, for example, like um, so it's like one, two, three, and. La 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 It's a two step on each side. La 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 One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You see, so it's not, it's almost like you're not quite doing the polka dance because you're dancing more on the side, you're based on the sides, or more in the hips and shoulders both, you know? And you leave yourself with one, Two, you lead yourself like this in a way, like with your uh, foot, you know. So I'm gonna step back a little bit so you can see my foot and I'm gonna give it rhythm. One, two, three, and one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. If you notice while I'm playing the song and dancing, you can hear the uh, feet going along with the song because this music was made in uh, houses. Like at first there were no bars and clubs. People dance more like in a house. They even have barn dances, yard dances, uh, deck, patio, whatever you can think of, porch dances. So uh, the feet, a lot of times you can hear the feet. And this is what, this is kind of like what separates like folk music from um, like folk dance music from like, uh, let's just say like, um, just sit down and listen concert music because the people and the musicians are involved more together. Um, and it just so happened, it's the music of a culture or people to where the majority of the people have good rhythm and their feet would be on the rhythm of the song and it would sound really good. But unfortunately, Things have evolved so much to where it's rare that we ever have uh, house dances or play any kind of house dances, you know? Me, I'm a solo musician a lot of times when I'm not playing with my band. And I also play with like in a trio or duo. So I, a lot of times I end up in house dance situations, but that's not your average Cajun and Zodico musician nowadays. One, two, three. You know, in old time music, they do taters. They go one tater, two tater, three tater, four, and then they start the song. So let's do that. Thank you. 
going on Cedric thank you <laughs> uh, man, huh? that song's called Je Tizzle Ball it's one of the favorites you know um, one of the most popular tunes you know it's called Je Tizzle Ball um, they even named like a documentary on Cajun and Creole culture it's called Je Tizzle Ball Hi. Uh, my name is Devin um, and thank you for joining us for our family fiddle food fest um, we'll be ending our virtual family fiddle food fest with a video featuring uh, the melodies of Funga Lafia and little Liza Jane and MC Square, you learned a little bit about uh, Hunga Lafia's history and how it was popularized in the 20th century. Dance for the 20th century dancers like Asada, Dafora, and Pearl Primus before becoming a popular song of welcoming in elementary and middle schools. Every year, Music Connect students come together for all play, even if we've only been learning their instrument for a few months. This year, we made an all play recording, including the Funga Lafia and Little Liza Jane melodies. We hope you enjoy it.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Whoa. Thank you. <laughs>Oh, you have a question? Okay. How do you play the music so fast with that bow? How do you play it so you know, fast? Um, that's a good question. There, it really, it really has a lot to do with the bow being a um, the bow being used as kind of a percussion instrument at the same time to, as to draw the sound or the melody. You know, it's like uh, it's like whenever you play guitar or banjo and you play a rhythm, if you get into it and kind of do some triplets here and there or some little, uh, you know, some syncopated kind of play along with the percussions, like the beat of the song and the drama, you know? That's the way, uh, that's the only explanation I would have for that, you know, but the more I play in all of the years, you know, of playing this kind of music, it's just something that comes to you naturally. You know, I'm sure that, let's say that you started jamming uh, Zodico and Cajun music on the fiddle. I'm sure maybe in about... Uh, you know, a couple of months, you'll be more used to those kind of bow motions, you know? Maybe. Yeah. How, how did you, did you hear that music a long time ago? You know, um, I heard a more modern version of it. We called Zodico a long time ago when I was a kid. And, uh, but I never did have any interest in it. Or I never thought I would even be a musician, but, um, by the time I was 13, that's when I started to really like it and appreciate it. And uh, on visits down to Louisiana, visiting my relatives, I would hear on the radio, especially during the weekends, uh, you know, some French music from here. And a lot of fiddle was involved. And that's when it really caught my ears. And, and also through bluegrass music. And I just wanted to be a fiddler. Ever since I was 13 years old, I wanted to play fiddle. Okay. You know? So the music's always kind of been there, but I didn't really embrace it till later. Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, like I tell people all the time when they ask me that question, you know, I'm from the land of accordions, Texas, you know, especially East Texas where I'm from, uh, is where the, the original set came into the uh, area, you know, but also the Spaniards. And it's the two berry, the, berry, the berry. Uh, We had a lot of accordion styles, many different styles. And uh, being, and then later on in history, you had a fluctuation of Cajun and Creole people from Louisiana that came too. They brought Zodico and Cajun music. So there's so many accordion styles within that one area that, you know, I just kind of, I liked it. And my German teacher, uh, his name was Mr. Bruna. He, he would pull out the accordion and play some songs for us and would sing with him. And, and uh, my great grandma, when she was young, before she started, you know, really becoming a family woman, she played uh, concertina for the church. So that's about the only accordion. <laughs> and my cousin, Bonton Mickey played accordion too. And uh, he's the first person to ever let me play accordion on stage at a real Zodico festival. Never really thought that, um, when I first started playing, I never really thought that I would actually be playing music like as much as I do now for a living. You know, um, to me, I just thought it'd be something that I would do like, you know, as a here and there, because I can play, people call me to come play like dances and Zodicos and things like that and Cajun dances, you know. Um, I thought I was gonna be an act teacher, but <laughs> I mean, I just started like playing and jamming with people here and there and everybody's like, oh man, that boy can play the fiddle. Oh, you ought to hear him, you know, and things just kind of like picked up. Because I was like, I was 18 years old when I got my first fiddle. Wow. So um, by the time I started like trying to jam with different people, they were like, you know, uh, there's like a, in, in the in the black Creole and Zodigo, uh scene, there's a shortage of fiddlers. The young people, they took more to the accordion than the fiddle. Well, I never thought of it like that really, because I was jamming with everybody. But then I started to look at it and it's true, you know, they had so many fiddlers that played, but then as, much, as soon as it became more electric, more people got into the accordion, I guess it's because maybe they had a harder time amplifying the fiddle, you know, with the electric band. I don't know. I really don't know. But um, I like the fiddle and I took to it and the accordion came a little later. 
And, you know, after playing with so many different accordion players, also collaborating with people from like West Africa, um, even some Latin music a little bit. And, you know, and a lot of times I just jam with anyone I can. Open mic nights, I used to like to go to those a lot. So I ended up just like playing a lot of fiddle. You know, it's like all my passion and love and, and, and want in learning the fiddle and wanting to learn it. And I, even just all those years, I wanted to even have a fiddle. I was like 13 years old. I think all that energy just kind of builds up and added up and it changed my like life. It just made me like a fiddler. <laughs> What time of day are you most creative? Y'all got some really good questions. I like this. Um, that's a really good question. You know, I'm 37 years old and I, I must say it changed with my age. I was more creative uh, very late. Um, you know, back when I was like from like the age of like 19 or 20 until uh, my late 20s. So for like 10 years, it would be like late that I was creative when the sun went down all the way until maybe like two in the morning. Um, then, like I noticed over the last maybe like seven years of my life, even eight years, I'm more creative now around 11 o'clock in the morning. My brain and everything is more like, uh, I don't know what it is, happy. I kind of goof around a little bit. I make up songs, you know, uh, me and my daughter, uh, I have a two and a half year old daughter. And um, I sing songs to her sometimes. I just kind of make up on the spot, you know. But if I sit down with a sheet of paper and a pen, try to write a song to go for the studio, I can't come up with anything. <laughs> but I find that my creative side of me kind of uh, is more earlier now, you know. So. Um, what is your creative process? How do you like make songs? Well, the creative process, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you think when you create your songs? What mood are you in? Okay, uh, when it comes to that, you know, songs, a lot of songs are inspired by different feelings and different moods, you know? Um, so some of my songs, you can hear it, that they probably come from a darker place or a sadder place in my life. And a lot of them come from a more like happy place or even just not so happy or sad, just more just balanced and just like whatever life is. And you hear it in the song and also in the lyrics. Um, but in most cases, I write a song by the melody first. In most cases, sometimes the melody and the, and the words come to me like the chorus, and I write the music around that. But in most cases, I write the music first and then the words come later. Where do you get the melody? That's a really good question. The melody, I think, like most people that create their own like melodies or songs, they no matter what, it comes from your inspiration. It comes from things that you already had with you or grew up with. And then it also comes with things that you're and believe it or not, some people don't believe this, but I believe it comes from whatever your ancestors to the ears are used to. So if you have a Western ear, you know, you're more used to certain melodies and, and certain lineups. And after that, you kind of, um, when you start exploring music personally on your own, you find that you're in, you get inspired or you become influenced by other things that you kind of uh, experimented or became interested in. So that it kind of governs your what you have as far as like when it, whenever you produce or give birth to a new song or a new melody, you know, that has uh, all those things that you took and kind of like getting marinated into your brain and into your style. So that that's where the melodies kind of come from. And on the other hand, when it comes to folk music and ancestral ties, I also believe that sometimes this is just me, you know, I kind of believe that the angels and uh, the ancestors kind of inspire you to play something that they want to hear you play. And that's it. Thanks, Thanks so much. Um, we're going we're gonna to let you go now. I know you have more performances today. It's a busy <laughs> day. <laughs> um, and we're so glad you joined us for 2020's Family Fiddle Food Fest. Thank you again. I was happy to be a part of this.
y'all. And thank y'all. And keep up the good work, y'all. Keep on playing the uh, violin. Ooh, <laughs> All right. Thank Have you. Bon Thanks. Bonsoir. Thank you.